it's, it's, it's super okay. And so yeah, how 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 you guys are doing then? Really well, thanks. Yeah, getting through. It's about it. <laughs> yeah, obviously in this lockdown, of course. And so obviously, um, you guys are in a band called um, Beyond Your Design. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so and so what and so how's that? How did that band start then? Right. Well, well, um, we actually met at uni. Uh, we all went to Derby University. And um, there was a couple of modules where you had to uh, create your own band and then like perform live like three or four different tracks. And um, to be honest, after like it was uh, two years of that, and then once we came out at the end of third year, we were like, shall we just give it a go? Um, we all enjoy playing together. We all enjoy playing and creating music together. So we were like, let's just do it. And uh, ever since then, we're just building up, doing derby shows, low key at first, and then building higher, getting out of Derby, going to different cities. And now we're actually able to come to like, and see you in Scotland, uh, which is a, a yes. great, you know, uh, achievement, to be honest, because that's a, it's so far away. Because um, you guys um, played in Opium um, not too long ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is, really uh, which is our own flagstep venue in Edinburgh, of course. We, we get all the, our metal bands that play here as well, so... Yeah, um, it was actually. I don't know whether you can just see it. There's the. Uh, it's uh, that one just there. It's the yeah, that, poster from the, the uh, Black Talons and King of Beasts and Afterburns. Uh, yeah, it. that's the. That's one of the bands that I know. Um, I wasn't at that gig, unfortunately. I believe I wasn't. I, I didn't make it to that gig, but I know you guys played it. So. That was oh, a really, really fun show. I know. Mm, It'd be actually amazing playing with Black Talony. Um, yeah, yeah. I have to give a shout out to you guys as well on here, that talent, my homies, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> just such a good band. They've got that old classic crash sound to them as well. So they're kind of like in Forbidden and stuff like that. They influence these sort of early crash metal, the slots in and that as well. So all these yeah, sure. classic crash metal bands. Um, so I was going to, so you guys want, I was going to ask you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell, tell, Ask a wee um, bio about you as well, what you do. Okay, uh, do you want to go first, sorry? Sure. Uh, I'm Harry. Uh, I play guitar and do some backing vocals. That's about me. <laughs> I, I, used, I used to have much longer hair. Um, well, not much longer, but, you know, the classic emo fringe. But, uh, <laughs> I shaved it off at the start of lockdown, so that's why I look a bit different. Okay. <laughs> See. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm Ed. Uh, I'm the drummer. Um, I do some shouting as well, um, some textual stuff, kind of fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, I used to have uh, proper short hair, and now I refuse to get it cut. So, <laughs> so we've uh, swapped a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we, we've swapped. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so uh, yeah, you obviously have yeah. Your vocalist as well, your front man as well in the band. Yeah, Rob, he wasn't uh, able to make it today, but uh, he's obviously the lead vocalist. Uh, he plays guitar as well. Awesome, awesome stuff, guys. And um, so, and um, so, yeah, so what um, genre and um, of metal do you guys play? We call ourselves melodic death metal. Yeah. Uh, kind of like. Uh, it's kind of like Scandinavian sort of stuff. I know, of course. Yeah. And every every Scandit Scandit Northern band has then yeah, done yeah. Metal, metal death metal and in frames and that's yeah, definitely. You can just name all these bands and soil work as well. I like yeah, all these metal, metal death bands myself too. So um, yeah, that's how we. That's what we mainly call ourselves. But we also take influence from you know modern metalcore uh, and a lot of thrash as well. I think I think Ken is a wee bit of a kill sets and trivium in there as well. Yeah, definitely for sure, <laughs> definitely. Because I know you guys had that in um, that song, I believe it's uh, kind of mind the name, but you had that big, uh, you had that really cool track set in the set in the set in the hill. You got the music video for. I've seen that from our feet to waste. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. It's a great track. Fred, oh, you, that's the one I played on the show at. So if, if you didn't yeah, realise that. Okay. Played that on the Sam Mary Metal Show, of course. So that's what I mean. Great, great. I just serve you guys um, playing. That's what I mean. I play all these bands 
across the UK, and this is this is what um, my shows are about. So, and um, we're basically and um, been I've been doing my metal. I've been playing loads of bands on my metal show for the past couple of years. So, love it. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. You just check, you can just listen to all the shows, and I have so many great bands from the London country that I'm playing. So, and. I know, and it's a great, great show, and I've been doing it for a couple of years myself, so... Nice one. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I'm doing, I'm doing my shows from home at the moment, so... So, I saw if I can do them still, which is so, so a great thing as well, so I'm doing that. Um, yeah, got candy lessons. <laughs> yeah, so, and so is there any other genres of metal, would you say you play, or just metal, death metal? Predominantly that. Yeah. Uh, we, we play quite a lot of hardcore shows for some reason um for some reason. Guess we we kind of have a little bit of a hardcore vibe but i definitely wouldn't say it's a, a strong one but it's small like tiny tiny little influence yeah <laughs> okay so um yeah we'll move on to our question um um so um what are your music and friends um well it's it, so did you say uh, um interests and friends i said influences oh influences. Yeah. oh yeah yeah right, right, right uh well obviously like you like you said a minute ago trivium is uh the big one absolutely uh, yeah, so many people just come up to us every show it's like oh so you guys you sound exactly like a Trivium when they did Ascendancy, I'm like, yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah that's all. Don't listen to it. <laughs> First, you know, early, early Trivium. Yeah, uh, right. Bill Bill as well. The Poison Era. Mm. Red Bullets as well. Yeah. And uh, they're a great band. They're oh, they're so band. good. And I liked them back in that day as well. The Poison and Swimming Fire and Fever Era. Yeah. Beat Era. And then... Yeah. Later other ones, I think, from there, it just kind of fell apart a wee bit, in my opinion, but it's the thing. And Trivium as well, they've dropped a new album right as well. It's so good. It's such yeah, a good album. Because I know they had that sort of um, Volbeat sound to them as well. Yeah. And then and then they had that sort of very, that, that old sound that Phil had when he was signing Manta is the sort of true Trivium sound, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a quality album. That's an amazing band. I've not seen them live before, but it's one of these bands I like to go and see live one of these times. Especially, yeah, especially gigs being cancelled now, obviously. How do you feel about that? Well, kind of like, obviously, we have to do exactly what we, we need to do in order yeah. to keep everybody safe and secure. So um, if that means cancelling no, I, I don't really see it as cancelling it's I, I see it as rescheduling um because all of these shows that we have set out to do we will do and that is uh, a guarantee it's just it determines when and where that is um so for the purpose of the time being um yeah all of our close upcoming shows um are most probably going to be cancelled for now but they will be rescheduled for early next year so it's a, it's a bummer, but we have to do what you have to do, you know, like as long as everyone is safe. Yeah. That's what matters. That includes every band, every metal band around the world is doing that. Mm-hmm. Doing exactly. shows. So I reckon there'll be like a sea, sea of new albums at least when this then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll have like in every, every week, we'll probably have a metal album drop on the same week. It's far by me. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I know uh, one of God's saying uh, album's been pushed back a little bit, but that's coming out soon. And that's the yeah, subtitled album. It's it's very really good as well. I think it's really tempting the tempting yeah. Yeah, it's got the with, uh, with a new drummer as well. Yeah, with a new drummer, of course. I'm gonna miss yeah. Adler. No more Chris Adler. Gonna miss that's, him. Yeah, it would be it would be much better with him in the band, of course. And especially especially in the Sacram- Sacrament and Ashes of the Week. Album, these class, the two classic albums are the, they're the best Lamb of God albums mm. for sure. Like, nothing can beat them. And then, <laughs> like these, these albums in probably about 30 years' time will still sound really, still, still really modern. 
Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, yeah. You think about all these metal bands now, the new albums, they won't sound old. And then if you hear if you obviously hear like Metallica's early albums and you can you can tell how old they are at like the thrash metal stuff back in the eighties, you know, they can hear the the production as yeah. good. And you hear a lot of the new albums now, the production's pretty good on their first albums. So Yeah, so exactly. Very really good, and um, really good. It's 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 different. It's definitely different back then. And I don't think you think about all these albums. They won't get old. They won't sound old. So, I mean, yeah. And um, I mean, well, my God, I mean, gonna look forward to getting the new album as well. Gonna oh, be definitely. a great album. Um, so we'll have and um, and um, we'll ask another question. And um, you want to say anything else about music and friends? So that's it. Eh? I just don't think there's much to say about that. Uh, well, obviously, it's stated the main two, Trivia and Bullet. Um, but then, you know, bands like um, Machine Head, mm-hmm. um, Scar Symmetry. Scar, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think um, Cap- Metallica yeah, well, as well, well. another good one. Yes, yeah, Scar Sym- Symmetry, they're another metal, death metal band as well. Yeah. So... Uh, then more recently, maybe uh, Gojira and Silosis. A little bit of Gojira. I'm hearing that now yeah. more and more. Yeah, great band as well. Gojira. Yeah. <laughs> Called them out of Broodstock as well. Um, yeah. two years ago, it's awesome. Nice. I want to see them again. Another, but I really like to see them again. So, yeah, great band. And we're, so we're asking our question: um, What are your hobbies and interests? Well, um, we thought we'd, we'd answer these just individually for this one. Um, so yeah. uh, what I'm into uh, in my spare time, I think it's hard to say that we're all into music composition, writing, um, just anything and everything that possibly comes into mind. Like My favourite uh, things to compose really is like uh, game OSTs, which is like original soundtrack, or essentially just plugging a guitar into a, a di box and then just messing around with some experimental metal <laughs> uh, but aside from that uh, i'm a barista as well so like I, I like doing uh latte art um which hopefully once this lockdown comes out i'll be able to actually get some more and more content for uh, instagram actually people to see what i can do i'm all right but i'm not i'm not good people will uh, definitely be better than me <laughs> um but yeah aside from that just like filming tv um like uh, what, what, what I've watched recently uh, it's the, the Witcher and the Mandalorian probably spring to mind um, I don't know whether you've seen them but yeah pretty good I mean I don't know whether people are going to disagree with me on this one but the, the Witcher is better than the Mandalorian going to say it out um, but yeah uh, so that's me that's what I'm into what about you Harry? Uh, yeah like you said uh, lots of music composition work uh, I, so in the first half of lockdown, I didn't really leave my computer. All I was doing was writing music, um, cause it's, it's simply because I enjoy it, not for any other reason. Um, but other than that, I've been doing a lot of other work within music. Um, I have been doing some work with our management label, Unearthed Music, um, kind of some, some artist development stuff. Um, so... Uh, anyone interested in you know doing some artist development work or is looking for artist management hit up uh unearth music we've got uh some big things coming over there yeah liam's a good guy as well liam is the great the greatest guy yeah man <laughs> awesome stuff uh, any anything else before we move on to the next question Ooh, what do i do for fun uh, <laughs> i think you're a gamer see yeah um lots of this lots of this <laughs> gets you through <laughs> yeah are you gamers as well do you enjoy playing video games <laughs> uh it's interesting you say that because um yeah I was, I, was, I, was, I was running through the uh the questions so there before you sent me and uh the the hobbies and interests came up and i was like well I am actually into uh, Super Smash Bros. at the moment um, oh, on that's Switch. Cool. So, um, that's cool yeah, but I was like, shall I, shall I throw it in? Shall I say it? But yeah, it's funny you say that. So yeah, sod it. Um, yeah, I'm into Smash at the moment. Um, but yeah, what about you? Are you playing anything at the moment? Um, 
And at the moment, and I'm playing, I'm playing in the PS4. Oh, well, yeah. So, and then I'm quite a modern. I'm not a, I'm not a, not played Super Mario in decades now, in years yeah. now. So <laughs> it was a game that I actually went into when I, when I, when I, when I grew, it was a game I played back in the day. And Super Mario 64. It was a great game. Yeah, I was just staying through to that TV screen for the for the for, the, for like a couple of hours, and then you just kind of get off of it because it starts a good game. <laughs> it's a good game, game. yeah. But and as a PS4 games, and I play a couple of titles, and I play and well, if you play and it's a really cool game, Western game that I play called WWE 2K. I think you've heard of the franchise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, some of the games aren't the best, but that's what I mean. It's good to actually create your own wrestler, superstar, and you can make them all look like melt heads as well, which is the <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about. And just give them, give them the long hair and the piercings and that, and you can make them like goths and that, different genres. So, and um, yeah, yeah. Um, I got some on my channel if you if you know as well. There's a couple of um, my my. Um, Wrestling matches with you. If you check them out on the on the channel, you can check out my wrestling matches on the CM Headbanger. You'll see them on my channel. And, and yeah, definitely look out for that. Lots of yeah. um, wrestling stuff there. Fat fun interviews. It's wrestling stuff there <laughs> on the channel. So uh, yeah, and it's not not a bad game. Two K Two K Nineteen. I think that's the the one that I kind of play now at the moment. Yeah, um, fair enough. So yeah, it's the best one I think. It's not the one the least bugs and grits, is it least so, <laughs> so, so yeah, and so I'll move on to another question. This one I think will be a really good one for you guys. Um what in guitar bases and amps do you guys use? Well, guitars, luckily sitting right next to me here. Guitars. Is that's the that's the set guitar. Yes. Me and Rob both use these. Um, his is slightly more colour than mine. It's bright green. Uh, but it's these good. are solar guitars. Um, v, flying V shaped. Uh, they're, just, they're just so good. There's not much wrong I can say about these guitars. It's neck through. It's, it's, it's just so smooth. I love it. <laughs> That's a great guitar. That's that, that's that's yeah. That's, so we got two of those on stage. It looks incredible. I think that's maybe the one you play. Maybe you played. I watched the wee clip on YouTube of you guys playing it. Up on stuff. I was just about to say that. And you guys we didn't actually have these ones back then. Um, so they just do ones. We use them live for not that long, only a well, couple of months. Well, um, yeah, when we did the music video, we were playing Jacksons at that time. Um, I just didn't gel with them that well because before that, we were using Ibanezes, and Ibanezes, you know, everyone uses them for a reason. They're really good, and I just couldn't gel with the Jacksons. But then um, we decided to take a chance on these Solar guitars. We never played them before, and just instinctively just bought them because they looked so good. Um, and it's the, probably the best decision we've made. They're just really, really good instruments. Good, because they look, they look good when I've seen them, so I bet yeah. they actually sound amazing when you're playing them. Oh, they, they sound... Yeah, I know Hoa, Hoa, Hoa England uses a solo as well, so he's, that's kind of his uh, guitar. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Euler England's... Uh, it's his company. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's, his, that's what I mean. Hoa, that's his company. Yeah. Do you like him? He's a very cool musician as well. He does a lot oh, of yeah, YouTube, yeah. especially on YouTube, I think, more than playing. Yeah, I, I love his live streams. Because he fits sorts of stuff on his channel as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, so do you have, is that the only guitars you have now then? Oh, I have to scooch them back just, a little bit. Another one <laughs> there, let's see. And I can reach over for my Ibanez. Ibanez. Oh, that takes me back. That, that one does. Yeah, this is a bit of a throwback. I've not yeah. not used this in a while, but if I'm if I'm just sitting here practicing a recording, it's, it's the reason it's just right there. So I can just pick it up and plug it in and just play it. It, it it's never gone wrong. It's just it, it's a it's oh, what's the word? It's a workhorse. 
that's a great you, you, that's, you, you keep playing it you keep using it you keep abusing it and it still works fantastically still loves you it's just it's, just, it's what ibanez does isn't it <laughs> um however it looks a little le- little bit more boring than a a bright it's white a flying v it's a bit like a raised pole I guess, yeah, it's got that sort of uh, that bursty colour to it. The sick guitar as well. Um, so, um, so what about um, what about yourself? Um, well, uh, I'm a Zildjian cymbal man, being a drummer. Um, I've, uh, at the moment, I'm using a, uh, a ZBT set that it consists of uh, two 14-inch hi hats, uh, a 16-inch crash with an 18 inch crash uh, and a 20 inch uh, ride uh, i've got a couple of other ones on the side as well like i've got an 18 inch china and a 10 inch splash um but the zb2 i've found absolutely perfect for budget to quality um so uh yeah they they, they don't break over time not 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 too bad and it keeps that nice crisp bright sheen to symbols um so if anyone's looking for a uh, not a starter set of symbols, but one that you can start gigging with. The ZBT set is perfect for that. Um, aside from that, because uh, when we play live, usually there's there's drums already set up. You know, you'll have your tom, your your floor tom, and your kick. Um, but at home, I'm playing on a uh, a Mapex Horizon in, a, in this beautiful aqua blue, uh, where you can see the birch as well. It's it's lovely. I don't have it behind me, sadly. Uh, it's downstairs, but um, yeah, that, that's pretty much my, my drum lowdown at the moment. Um, I love cymbals. The more, the better. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff, guys. Um, so, um, so um, and what about, um, would you say, what, what, about, um, what, about, um, what about the vocalist? What does he use? Would it, would yeah, he, he uses the, the same guitar as me, but in a, a, a neon <laughs> greeny yellow colour. He needs a saw as well, then. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we, we don't have uh, a bass player, uh, so bass goes through the backing track. Probably. So you actually have a bass player in the band, then. Well, I, 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 funnily enough, behind me, I've got a bass guitar, <laughs> so I, I could just go grab that. <sighs> It's not bad actually that bass. No, it's not. That's a cool. That's a cool one. That's that's a sick ass one, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, it's not actually mine, but uh, it, it's a friend of mine. But it's a, it's just a good bass. We recorded uh, we we recorded our music using this bass. Uh, it's just solid. It just works. Kind of small, looks, really. Looks like a metal machine. Like an axe. Yeah. I like, I like the bridge. Bridge is cool. It, it's not actually part of the bridge. It's just. Uh, it's just a bit that's screwed on. But this gives that wee bit of a cool appearance to it, like yeah, yeah, something like Zelda or something. Just yeah, yeah, man, definitely like Zelda. Something, something that just adds adds to the bit to it, adds to the style to it as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so as so I've said to that question, we'll move on to our next one. And what are your pre pre gig routines, warm ups, if you do stuff like that? Um, we, we don't really do much. Me and Rob do quite an extensive vocal warm up together. Um, so that's that is literally it. We, 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 we usually all just really calm going onto a stage. We don't need any superstitions or you know rituals or anything. We just do our do our warm ups. We, we get on, do our quick sound check, and then we play. Thanks, it's simple. Yeah. I suppose it's because when you when you think about it, it's just like you when you do something you enjoy, to that extent there's no real um, pressure. You're just like, oh well, I'm just I'm just about to go do something I enjoy, like simply like turning on the TV. You know what I mean? There's nothing to it really because you enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, uh, I tend to find that it's just that that calm approach to it. It's just I don't know. It, it allows you to enjoy it so much more. Yeah, the the people that get like superstitions and they do rituals, I. It's just asking for something to go wrong, in my opinion. Definitely. You have this whole, you know, if you do a pre-show show, as it were, of, you know, doing a fucking huddle and a rugby charm or whatever it is, it's just 
something that can go wrong. You're asking for things to go wrong. And then, you know, you, you blame it on something that isn't real, as it were. Yeah, and you don't think about it sometimes when you've done a mistake on the guitar, for example, stuff like that. Just uh, you, you If like I that, make so. a mistake on guitar, I will, you know, I, I, I'm not ashamed. I'm not a very good guitarist. I know that. If, if I make a mistake on stage, I'll I'll be the first one laughing about it. If yeah, sound, yeah. the sound in that goes off in the stage, stuff uh, like that. Has that ever happened? Uh, right, there was one time <laughs> where there was nothing coming through the back of the cab, but it was because the uh, the connection was like hanging from like, this piece of stone. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> if you can yeah. that was a uh, was that, that um, a... battle of the bands, the metal to the masses. No, no, it, no, it wasn't. It was the same venue. It was the Firebug in Leicester, but it was in January. Um, yeah or, or was it january i don't know it, it was our first show after we rebranded so yeah it would have been yeah. january um and i just lost all sound coming out of my amp and I, I was fiddling around with all my stuff i couldn't figure out i thought it was something wrong with the guitar itself but then i had looked around the back of the amp and the, the whole input on the cab had just fallen out um god knows how but uh yeah, we we spent like three five minutes trying to figure that out. But, you know, <laughs> like I said, all we did was just laugh it off. You know, Rob told some jokes on stage. Fucking um, a Toto by Africa was playing over the PA. <laughs> Everyone was like waving. It, it, no, I reckon fine. it added more to the show. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, yeah. Is there any anything else I would say to that question as well, or we'll just move on to the next question? We should then, uh, yeah, we actually forgot to ask what amps you guys need. Oh, amps, yeah. yeah, we yeah. That, so we, and then <laughs> me, this, me and Rob both use uh, Laney Ironhearts. Um, yeah, the the IRTs. They're just they're, they're they're quite compact. They're quite thin. Um, although I put mine in a fucking massive case. Um, it is. I, I don't know why. It's just what it came with. Um, which I, I actually bought my amp off of. Um, my friend Owen from As Everything Unfolds, who I'm actually wearing their T-shirt right now. Nice, sweet. Uh, yeah, it's brought it second hand off of him, and I've not really had any issues with it. Rob's never had any issues with his. Again, they're like I was saying earlier; they're just workhorses. They just work all the time. You know, we 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 throw them in and out of the car. Um, yeah, they, they get really beat up, um, but. They just work really well. They sound awesome. That, that's always like that name, Rock Horses. It's mine, it just reminds me of it. Just, it always goes through my mind as a truck, more like oh, being a rock horse. That's what I mean. Yeah, you know, yeah. I need it, need it for that way. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think if you if you, you know things can last for years as well. If you, if you, if you I know if things last for years, then that means they'll be a good bulk quality and they would last would do the job so yeah definitely they uh they, they probably need a a service <laughs> a bit of a clean. I think, yeah, um, they've been used enough to have a bit of tender love and care to them but yeah they they just sound so good as well awesome so we'll move on to another question our next question, the question we're meant to be saying um i think um, how do you guys perform live um Right, well, to be honest, like, as we mentioned with like the uh, the, the setup, um, it's yeah, two guitars, two vocals, yeah. a guy shouting, drum kit, and a backing track with a bass. Um, but the it's way quite surprising plays... you guys, it's quite surprising you guys use the backing track. And... Yeah, it was when we were we, we wanted to do uh, metal to the masses in uh, two thousand and uh, eighteen. No, 19. it was last year. Nineteen, yeah, two thousand and nineteen, but. Um, I'm, I'm sure we were using it long before then. But it was actually yes because yeah. we lost we lost our bassist. Uh, that was the culprit. Um, yeah, we lost our original bassist, and then we had like a stream uh, of other bassists coming through. And um, in the end, we just thought, you know, sod it. We'll, we'll just we'll have bass coming through the backing track, and then from there we built this. Uh, this essentially, it's a show, isn't it? Like um, this start to finish, thirty minutes set. 
that we can play to and then it emphasizes like harmonies and guitar solos like sub hits uh some samples and it just really adds to the show and makes it that it seem that a little bit more i don't know it's got that that, that showmanship that professionalism to it um but um like having a, an actual basis would be nice but that's you know maybe a future thing if anything yeah so. i reckon everything <laughs> you'll get up in the future just it's difficult to find members when you're in a band as well it's one of these things you eh, getting bands going it's, it's difficult for them to to get off their feet sometimes these bass players but you do get <laughs> yeah we, yeah it's finding someone to gel as well, which um, is, you know, that's, that's the bit that will take the time. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, when, when we're on stage, it's very lighthearted. Um, as Harry said, you know, if something goes wrong, you laugh it off, you just go through it. Like, um, because if you're not enjoying it on stage, even if something goes wrong, then you shouldn't be up there. Like, people can sense that. And, um, yeah, if you're smiling, like, like it was a couple of shows ago, uh, I, I had a drum solo and I threw a stick across the room. Like, <laughs> I mean, luckily, I had another stick down here to catch it, you know, and like pick it up in the next two beats. But it's things like that, you know, like you just you just play through it, you're smiling. And then if like you're smiling, people are just going to smile back. Cause it's funny. Um, yeah, so you so, do. Yeah, it's just a load of fun. Like, that's all it is at the end of the day. It's why the reason why we do it. <laughs> sure. So move move on to another question now. Um, is there any music on the way when you're releasing it? Oh, um, I think that'll be a difficult one if they. Yeah, uh, so the we, we did moment. start recording our debut EP. Um, if, but we actually did quite a lot of it. We got all the drums recorded, we got all the guitars recorded, and the bass. Um, and then we went into lockdown. Uh, hmm. something like two weeks before we were meant to go and track vocals in London yeah um, so that has put a bit of a a bit of a hold on everything whilst we tried to figure out how we you know can get this finished um, we, we, we did have a proposed release date for October but you know it, it, who knows with how the work's going to go now with the whole lockdown we we are still working on it, still trying to get it out for the proposed date, but um, it might take a little bit longer, but it's definitely coming at some point in 2020. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. Good, good to see that. Maybe maybe you should do your chat the vocals at home or something. Yeah, we, we we've been fine. talking with our our uh, producer about the best way to do it, sending some vocal takes back and forth, how they could be better. And see if we actually can do it at home. Rob's got a bit of a recording setup being built in his own flat. Yeah. Um, he, he's putting, uh, you know, dampeners on the wall to make the sound better. He's bought a, a shield to go around the microphone. So hopefully, we can do it from home. Um, but yes. but then the question is, you know, backing vocals as well. You know, we're not allowed around each other's houses. So we can't go and do that. But hopefully, we'll figure something out. Hmm. That's the thing. Yeah, it's, diff- it's difficult to be a band, but it's difficult to be together now for this when the wind as well. And yeah, I don't know why. I don't know when you're in the van, you have to be together doing all that stuff. So, yeah, for sure. We're we're making do with uh with Skype calls like these. Yeah, yeah but, yeah, I think all these bands are doing it as well. Yeah, I do them at the moment. So yeah, and um, the fine bands are probably doing stuff like this. It's so much different, eh? Yeah, it's just a way to keep in contact and yeah, keep a bit of a workflow going as well. Mm-hmm. Keep the content coming in so people know that you're still active and by you know, you're still alive essentially. Like um, <laughs> you know, like posting something, you know, it might make someone laugh. You know, it might you know make someone feel better in that day. So um, yeah, it's just always good to keep things coming out, I suppose. Yeah, and yeah, we 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 we're good when you get your. Yeah get the EP out the end of this year yeah so, yeah and i'll give out i'll definitely get it get played on the show for sure as well oh, sure man so yeah everyone keep a lookout for uh the together we rise ep from beyond design coming at some point <laughs> in 2020 sweet yeah. so i think we've i think we've finished that question now um what's and uh, any got have you got any plans for money tour 
No, well, probably leading not. on from what Harry said, yeah, like uh, the the um, release date was meant to be in October, and we were going to have a release tour as well. Um, now it's only so happened that two um, of our venues have actually cancelled on us, um, but whether they're going to be rescheduled or hopefully over the next couple of months when the uh, the lockdown is lifted slowly, they might get in contact with us and say, oh, okay, well, if it's all good to, you know, have live shows, then we will we book you on those days. But um, I can understand for the time being why people are pulling out and then just cancelling because it's just easier on people and refunds and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, hopefully if the lockdown gets lifted um, over the next few, four months, then we'll still be able to go ahead with our release uh, EP tour in October. Uh, I believe it's at the beginning of October uh, with a little bit of a couple of days break and then we have uh, the second half to it, uh, mid to late October. Uh, so yeah, keep a look out. It should be great. It's, uh, awesome. it, it's eight dates over two weeks. So eight days over two weeks. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a bigger tour than we've done before. But uh, again, hopefully we've got another tour in July but quite doubtful that that will actually go ahead because of because of covid and lockdown um that was meant to be with a uh, good friends of ours devastator and hell affected um hopefully it still goes ahead but we don't know we, so, we're actually meant to be coming up to edinburgh on those three days that, but, was, uh, that, was, that, would, that would have been cool as well yeah hopefully it can still go ahead because yeah you know, we'd love to play at opium again Right, if not, then we'll definitely be rearranging it. Yeah, and so they the two bands are like your like your local bands from from there. Uh, Devastator are local. Um, Hell affected. I I'm not actually. I think they're a little bit further afield. Um, but yeah, we've played with we played with Devastator before. We've not played with Hell affected yet. We were meant to. Um, in February in Stoke, but um, that show got uh, pulled for other reasons. So th- that would have been really fun because they are mates of ours. Awesome. I mean, I've not seen these bands before, but that would be good when if they do come up to Edinburgh, that would be a good set. That yeah. would be a good one. Love Devastator, I reckon. Yeah. Black, yeah. Black Black and fresh. Well. That's cool. Yeah. Cool stuff. And we have some good bands from here as well. Um, I do not mind. I wouldn't mind seeing the names, but it's good to see. And um, it'll be good to see the names of like Afi Amund and um, Dark yes. Tide and stuff like that. Yes. We've got some really good bands. Such a um, good band. I think Afi Amund like the ones you see. Afi Amund kind of like the old fresh metal band that we have in here as well. Uh, yeah, really yeah. good. We're really good friends of mine as well. Um, yeah, they're good guys. Uh, they, they've been the one. They've been the one for a few years now, but they've done a week tour as well. So they've done. They've done quite a lot of things over the over the past year. Over the past year, year now, and more than a year now. So it's been really good in that band. I think they've got a really good sound as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. If you like, and then you got Dog Tide as well, which is like um, groove metal. I had the did an interview with the, the guys you can find in the channel as well. So yeah, a little bit of groove metal. <laughs> the great band and um, we have like and um, we have like um, Amber Watts and other bands to so make your name off and um, got one of my drink my wet um, spirit and Nassau's band and um, they actually been metal to the masses some of the we actually had metal to the masses in Edinburgh um, this year as well but that actually got cancelled due to the Covid as well so you probably yeah. know they were meant to have the final show and I think it was April, but they also postponed that now. So, I mean, Nassau's a really good band as well. They won, they actually go, they got through to the final. So, they're a really good band. And they're playing off some other bands as well. I think there's another Ember band called Engine of Vengeance as well. So, they're playing with them. And we get great, 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 great bands. So, that's what I mean, Met the Masses. I hope, it, hopefully, that we get. There was meant to be something to do with Bloodstock as well, which is a good thing about it as well. We 
Yeah, yeah. the Jaeger Meister stage, I believe, if that's like. Wait, it's the, yeah, it's the new blood stage, actually. Is that? So yeah. there's every stage, every stage. I think I think of the Jaeger Meister stage is like the small stage as well, with some some of the the I sort of new. Jaeger is actually the second biggest stage. Is that in the stage? It's the small stage outside the main stage. I remember seeing that. It's the small stage. I can't remember now. Uh, it's a blur, isn't it? Though when you think about yeah, yeah. it, I, I only went. To, I went to see the main stage, and then this associate this socio rank stage. I think is a sort of the sort of the second yeah. baddest one. I think yeah, it's, it's the sort of smaller bands, but they still have big names. I think it pretty as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, good. To, it'd be good, to you guys. If you, if you, if you, so you, you play metal to the masses, as, as you said, you play metal to the masses. Did you, did you get to the final? Uh, we got to the semi-final, but uh, didn't didn't make it all the way to the final because, um, well, we were never given a reason, but we like to think it was because we didn't have a bass player. <laughs> Next time, you guys, you'll get to the final, hopefully. Hopefully, like, that's a, Edinburgh. That's a good well, we're not actually stuff. allowed to enter it now. Oh, we got up because because uh, we're signed to a record label. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah it's only for the independent bands. Yeah, I thought it was for local bands. I didn't actually know that actually. Oh. Well, th- that, that's what Rob says anyway. So I will say. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll ask a few more questions now. I think we've only got a couple more on the on the bill now to see. So what is uh, and this is I think the one you might enjoy. Is there a dream gig you guys like to play? Well, literally just what we've been talking about, Bloodstock. <laughs> that would be amazing. I think everyone says that. Uh, yeah. Being on the main stage at Bloodstock, I think would be Yeah, because being a being a band from Derby as well, it's local to us. So you're quite up the street then. Yeah, it's literally around the corner pretty much. Um, as well as download as well. Castle Donington, it's only a half hour drive. Yeah. It's a D- definitely bloodstock download as well they are you know they're... why would you not want to play them definitely because there's some great there's so there's always great bands that play there and there's exactly, the yeah. and then metalheads over the country will be yeah. there as well so and it, it being local we could get you know probably quite a lot of our friends down as well yeah it would have been a good one this year as well to just please do a 50 <sighs> 50 year tour as well and I'll say we should be together for 2021 now so yeah yep. wait a whole another year a year and one, one a year now I think because it's August isn't it yeah yeah so slightly more than a year but about a year and a bit now so I reckon it should be better next year as well hopefully get some more I think they're making it four days instead of three days I think yeah, they've got to make up for it now because, like, we've had a year with no festivals. So, like, in my opinion, it should be twice the length. Uh, <laughs> so, start on the, the Friday and then end on the following Friday. That'll be a whole week. Or maybe yeah. start on the Friday and on the following Sunday. That'd be good. I mean, if it's four days, does the festival start on start on Friday and finish on Monday? Or does it start on Thursday and finish on Sunday? I'm not sure. I'm there not. is. Um... That's there's great. the the takeover stage at download on the Thursday. So people with their early bird tickets get on on Wednesday, get absolutely hammered, and then they actually have some music on the Thursday from the uh, the takeover stage, which is um, it's a it's a competition stage basically. Um, so you know since January I think from the start yeah. of the year, there's been um, bands applying to play on it, and the organisers you know slowly whittle it down to choose their favourite bands to actually go and play Download Festival on the Thursday. It's made up of um, local bands, so smaller independent artists. Um, so last year, our friends, the City's Ours headlined. Uh, the year before that, again, Friends of Ours and Visions headlined it. So it's a really good opportunity for smaller bands to get big exposure. Absolutely. So, um, uh, yes, um, I mean, I would. I, I mean, I didn't know it was him um, first. They had stuff like that on Thursdays. And usually, we, we just go for the festival for the weekend, the Friday into the Sunday, and then that's it. Yeah, it's d- definitely like, worth getting that early ticket to yeah get another day. In I the mean, 
it's one of these things I don't go to I've not been downloaded then, I haven't been downloaded myself. But, I mean, I went to Buzz.com, Ken, but I'm pretty far away from these places, so <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> even get myself yeah. all the way down there. <laughs> um, it was just then, it was the case for my friend that actually drove us all the way down there one of these days, and that was the only year we went to it. So, and he's actually moved away, he's actually moved out of the country now, so, so, and um, I won't be. I, I mean, I won't be going going to Buzzstop now for the time being. But I mean, I would definitely. I think next in twenty twenty one, I'll give me. I'll actually give him more time to actually think about it. And I would yeah. probably definitely would want to go and see Judas Priest playing a fifty year tour. For sure, yeah. Um, I think there's some great bands playing then playing playing that playing that wine up as well. Was, I mean, I think it was better than twenty nineteen. Because 2019 probably wasn't as good as in um, 20, 2021 now, and 2018 they were kind of better. But I think it's kind of like the choice, because I think Download, uh, Download Festival had Tool play in 2019. I'd love to have gone, honestly. Seeing Tool, yeah. like... They're uh, great. What, the 10,000, is 10,000 uh, days? Days, days that's the one day. that, honestly, it's a, it's a perfect album. Like, I love it. Um, I don't, I don't, I'd love to see him play it live, but like, I just missed it. Like, I've I know, getting... I've not seen him myself. I mean, I was disappointed about not going that year either. I mean, it's one of these things, it's, I can't even really get down there. Especially if, if I can't, eat, can't eat drive all the way down there. I can't get to festivals like that, unfortunately. But I was disappointed not getting down, down, down the road that year. Especially when Slipknot were playing as well. Oh, yeah. And that would have been a great festival. I think it would have been in Straya Square doing the final UK tour as well. That's the that's the other thing. So Straya were actually on the roll as well, but they weren't actually on the main stage. Surprisingly, I'm not. I no idea why they weren't on the main stage, and it was not headlining and not Straya because they would that would have, they would have actually been better for them mm. to headline it. But that's quite funny. And I, I never. I did, it's quite funny how they didn't do it. How they did that. They maybe they still got Square on a Sunday. That's what it's done. It's moved, it's moved the dates a wee bit. But... Probably something to do with money. Yeah, something. Always, always money involved in those things. Yeah, they just had the stage, they just had it set up for them. No, they had the stage put for them, probably for that stage. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously then we've been cancelled as well. That's, that'll be happening soon, but it won't be happening now until yeah. next year. I mean, Download has probably had a good, it's got quite a good wine up as well. So, I mean, these festivals, yeah. those festivals have good wine ups. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, I'll move, I'll, I'll move on. I'll, I'll ask you anything else. Any other things you like to say about your dream gig? Any other, if you if you wanted to play a dream gig, would you, would you um, like to play anything else as well? But to be honest, I think a Bloodstock download, all those major UK festivals is one. Me personally, I would love to do a tour of America and then a tour of Northern Europe, so like Sweden, Nor- Norway, Denmark, yeah. like all of where you know that speed metal and it just where it all came from. You go back to the beginning uh, and playing there would be absolutely fantastic. Um, but I don't think my hair's long enough or straight enough to fit in yet, so uh, you will see. <laughs> I'll have to shave it completely bald, I reckon. Yeah, you would, honestly. It's either all or nothing, though, isn't it? Yeah. So you're either bald or you have hair down to your feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, mine's is gone, so I'm, I'm, I've got some, I've got some away for you to you, and of course, so... Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know the pain. I've got the curry, the sort of curry. I've got, the, I've got curry here as well. This is just natural, so it's the way it goes. Yeah. I mean, that would be really cool for you guys to play a year two or do a year two. I mean that's what about so that's what it's about. It's been in the band. You you play you two grew up in this America and else in South America as well too. And so I mean every band should get the opportunity to do that. One day. One we day. actually have a, a a really strong fan in Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One guy who absolutely loves us in Argentina. <laughs> That's 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 really good. You, you, never, you never know who's listening to you guys. They could be someone from from Australia listening listening to you, and you, you don't know. And they yeah. like the albums, they like your music. So that's what I mean. 
it's quite surprising how metal goes. It's like there's like probably like one person in the world that listens to a local band. Yeah. Like guys, and there's like another band somewhere else. Probably one of our bands up here probably listens to someone. Probably people from now people from probably bands from here. There'll be somebody there'll be some of the old day uh, people listen. There might be some people from India that listen to Dog Tired or FEM. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, there's oddly there's a uh, there is a metal community in India. Like there's a, a band called Bloody Wood. I don't know if you've heard of them. What uh, band Bloody is that? Uh, they do like uh, uh, it's like it's metal, but with like uh, it's like an influence, like a like authentic um, like instruments. Um, it's about the Indian instruments in it as well. I think that's the yeah. One. Um, but honestly, they are so good. Like they like it was a. Uh, a guy called Tom Collins, which is uh, the bassist and lead vocalist for Devastator, he posted something about him on Facebook, and I gave him a listen. I was just like, it's a whole different side to to like metal with this influence that I hadn't heard before. So it, it was great, honestly, great band. I don't know the Indian metal scene myself, but it's, it's different. It's quite quite cool. What you you you, can, you kind of learn a bit more from other places around India. Yeah. I mean, not too long ago, I actually heard a, there's a metal band from South, South Korea. Um, I mean, I played them on the show a few times, so it's actually really good to get some metal from South Korea out, out there on the on the metal show. So I played a band called um, Crash, and I don't think you know, it's a generic name, just Crash, as in Crashing, Crashing and that, just Crash, that's it. It's all, all the name runs, just a general name, you won't get much of a band. But what you do, what you do, you can search the album titles up, and so there's a very really good album called "Endless Endless Supply of Pain" by Crash, and that's an album you can just check out the album title, and you'll get the band name, you get the band, you get the band basically from there. And there's that another album so called metal. "There's Another Band" as well called "Experimental State State of Pain," I believe it's called "State of Fear," I think. Um, I mean, I'll take that as soon as you take that. So I forgot to actually mention the albums. I'm not, um, and yeah, I'll just just then check the album, check the check the albums, and out you know. And but I know they're really good bands, and it's quite surprising you actually get a band from South Korea. Yeah, there's I think not uh, many. Singapore as well has a really good metal scene. You wouldn't know about that. I don't even know it myself. Yeah, there's a, a few metal bands in Singapore. Our our record label has just set up their their Asia branch in Singapore. Uh, really? We've signed a couple of metal bands. What's the name of your record label? Um, uh, Dreamscope Media Group. Dreamscope Media Group. They have some good bands on there then. Well, we're actually the only metal band signed to the uh, the UK label. Um, it is mainly for... Uh, Pop artists. <laughs> oh, is that? So maybe but they'll get some. They'll get some yeah, metal exactly. artists in the in the boat. I think. Yeah, but they 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 took a chance on us. Uh, thought they could really help us out. They really liked our the way we worked, our work ethic. Um, but you know, having said they're a pop label, you know, half the people that work there are complete metalheads. <laughs> yeah. So that maybe sees it all then. Yeah, so you know, we we actually can work with them on metal music. It's you know, it's really good having people who know metal music, but then how to you know commercialize it like pop. Yeah, they've really helped, honestly. Yeah. So that, that that's yeah. really, that's really cool. And yeah, so I'll yeah. just... any pop bands looking for a a record label, go look for Dreamscope Media Group. So they'll, they'll get some more pot at us then, probably. <laughs> yeah. And so I was just saying, yeah, there's an album called Experiment in a State of Fear, is the, so is the Crash album is the one to check out. Yeah, yeah check I mean, it out. Crash, they're a really good band. It's such an amazing band from South Korea. And you wouldn't have heard them, you wouldn't have heard of them until, until now. So yeah. it's one of these things, you just learn so much about bands. I only discovered them like 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 half a year, not even a year ago. I discovered them a few, I mean, probably half a year ago or something. So yeah, it's a good, really good bands. Like Fear Factory, just a few oh. bands and just your metal sound. Nice. 
very good band. I actually got my few factory shot on today as well. <laughs> factory shot on, so just thought I would like to keep myself a bit more fear factory for the stream. Um, I like fear factory. Nice. Got really on, Ed, what, what, what shirt are you wearing? Well, you've had our, our two shirts. What have you got on? And I've got fear factory on, and obviously the demanufactured one. Yeah. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the great album. It's the I'm actually buying up an album. What are you wearing, Ed? Right, sadly not a um, a band t-shirt, but if you've ever heard of Rip and Dip, they are one of the best sort of low-key... <laughs> uh, can, you, can you see them? Can you see them? It's a little cat. <laughs> see ya. Get, get it off. Get it off. It's a little cat. Like, what? <laughs> Honestly, no, it's such a good website. They've got so much fun, fun shit on there, honestly. Like, pop culture and their own independent stuff, which is it's hilarious. It's a great place to buy presents. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's, that's a good one. Some, some not wearing brats. Usually, usually everyone would wear a metal shirt, and I'm the only one that's wearing a metal band t-shirt. <laughs> Speaking the of uh, band t-shirts, did you see uh, just that box just there? Is that your band shirts there? That is brand new, unreleased merch. Sitting there. Sitting there, waiting for uh, waiting for people to buy up the old stuff so we can <laughs> get that on the market. It's cheap, it's a fiver, please get rid of it. Then we can sell some awesome new stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> please. Yeah, selling our, our current line on sale on our uh, big cartel store. So uh, go, and, go and pick up on anyone that's uh, watching this. Need to get rid of them so we can get this uh, this new stuff on the shop. Sweet. So yeah, I think we've got one more question to ask you guys now. Yeah, this is one for the listeners. Anything anything you like to say to the listeners? This is like shout out questions. Pick up our merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's there. It's ready to go. Um, to be honest, it was a uh, uh, yeah, like Scotland's given such a warm welcome when we came. Like, yeah, we just we're looking uh, forward to coming back. Like, so really that, was, like, was that your first ever time in Scotland then when you guys played at Opium? Yeah, yeah, it was mine. Was it Was it yours as well, Harry? None of us had ever been to Scotland. Never. Never. It's, you, you, it's a really good city, Edinburgh. So did he, yeah, did he have a wee good uh, time having a wee explore in the town and that? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, beautiful funny story, that, that gig was actually on my dad's birthday. And, was um, that? My mum and dad travelled all the way up to Edinburgh for a weekend away to come and see our gig on his birthday. <laughs> so uh, me, me and Rob got to spend, uh, spend the day with my parents walking around Edinburgh, seeing the sights. So we're a good city, Edinburgh. Good yeah, city. it's lovely. Um, we have a we have quite a good metal scene. We have a good metal scene here as well. We just don't have the big massive bands that come over and play the yeah. So yeah. well, we were meant to have brains playing play in Edinburgh, but obviously that got cancelled. So that was the only in the liquid rooms. Of course, that never happened. Now. It's not happened now at the moment, but probably we we schedule. I think so. Yeah. We don't have like big bands that play Edinburgh. Like, I think we have like medium sized bands that come and play sort of the smaller venues in Edinburgh now and again. I think we then had we had then I think we had them um, Sipple West that played and uh, no 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 it's not a Sipple West. I think it was then um, Cannabis Cox. I think they were I think they played Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. The thrash metal band. I think they Went and played in the venue Bannermans. They played there. That's one of our, on our, one of our local venues in the in the Cowgate. So we and I mean we have we have a couple of venues on the same area. Usually, usually and on that same area we open was because that was on the Cowgate. That's where most of the pubs and that are. So yeah, yeah. and so. Opium is probably the one you played. It's a that's a more modern venue. It's a, it, it kind of has that sort of Egyptian feel to it as well. When when you see when you inside it, but you've got the sort of brown walls and that. And the, I guess so. Yeah, mm. I can't a, remember it that clearly, but I I think so. Yeah, it just has that sort of brown. It's got that sort of browny color to it, and so that means it maybe makes it more like an Egyptian sort of feel. But <laughs> it's some it's quite a modern venue. I think it was then done that recently, so it's modern, but 
So they have like a, they have the stage upstairs, obviously, in the van and the pub downstairs. So it's yeah. kind of two, some two floors. And we have Bannermans, as you say, this is the a pub on the on further down. It has it has a, it has a it's it's got a biggest it's got a stage as well, and it's got a pub area as well. I have stayed as well, so yeah, we that's kind of our venue as well. Um, we have like another venue, it's kind of news west as well for metal fans like with Bella and Jella. It's not many, we need to have the slightly bigger metal gigs there, and we have brands as well. This is slightly follow up. This is the small, this is the tiny, tiny, tiny venue for this with the tiny, where you're kind of like sardines, so you probably like you probably. <laughs> Probably for the teeny tiny bands that go there, the bands in the mice that pray there, rather than the the monkeys or something, they'll pray in that venue and the rather than the than the rather than the humans. So it's quite that's a tiny venue and that's the smallest venue for the bands to pray. So I mean, Lovely. yeah, good, 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 good venues. I mean, did you do anything else in Edinburgh as well? Just then um, we sightsee in one the town. Did you go for half a seat or something? Uh, we, we we walked up a hill. <laughs> there was a hill. That's about all I remember. We, we I think you probably called Col- um, Colton. How we think you're thinking of is the other one. This is the one that's outside. The, this is just at the town anyway. I think it was that one. Right. I watched your wee your wee blog video you put up on the channel. Oh. That's what I seen. I meant to say that. So it was in Colton Hill. I think you walked up. You probably the big, on that, the big monument in the tower. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. It's nice. It's the really nice up there. It's the one. Yeah. You can see, the, you can see the whole city from the top of there. Absolutely. It's really nice. See That's, the layers of the city as well, isn't it? Cause it's yeah, all like so cool. many layers. It's cool. It's really cool up there. Um, so yeah, um, I mean it's been a real pleasure actually giving it's been a real pleasure chatting to you guys. Really yeah, good thank chatting you. to you for having us. Yeah, it's been great. It's been really good. Hopefully well, everything will go back to normal. Every all these gigs, everything should get back to normal. I know it'd be good to see all these and um, be better as well. Metal should um, be be much better as well. We'll get I've, some yeah. more albums yeah. dropped out. Get more COVID songs, I think, out there as well. Maybe. Yes. Yes. I think, I think <laughs> well, I mean, Devil Driver released a COVID song the other day, and I heard that, and it's really cool. So, oh, I'll have to check that out. It's how's was that? I think it's called Keep Away from Me, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> yeah, really cool song. And should, um, check out um, Raised by Owls. They released uh, uh, a, like a, a quarantine song, which is so good and so funny as well. So you're gonna get a whole wars of metal bands if you sing in quarantine songs, COVID songs out there. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be different. It's gonna be it'll be quite it'll be fine to remember as well. And all these all these metal bands will put well it's yeah. something new, that's something new as well. So I mean yeah. So yeah, thank you very much guys. I really appreciate you taking the time. So Yeah, thank you. Everything should everything should go back to normal and hopefully yeah, I should see we should be able to do this. Uh, we should be able to uh, chat again at some point as well. Oh, for sure, definitely. Yeah, 100%. It's been good. So, thank you very much, guys.